evolve as a general. Yeah, so we are recording just so that everyone knows and uh, you're aware uh, in case you wanna have your camera off. Also really appreciate people staying muted uh, unless you're talking. That way, if you have really unreasonable uh, pets and or other noises that go on in the background. Uh, just, uh, I'm gonna share my screen with you for a few seconds. The um, So some updates and some, uh, some things like that. So hopefully you can see my PowerPoint slide. I don't know what you can see. We can see your PowerPoint slide right now, Chris. Okay. So uh, the FRC team call, some announcements. Hey, are you looking for mentors? First mentor network, uh, you can set up a profile. That is step one is you gotta have a profile. And uh, the links to the stuff, I will also drop the links that I have here in the chat. And I will also try to um, get these out via some email updates uh, to folks. This allows uh, people in the community to also individuals to sign up to be mentors. And then they, if teams have profiles, they can find you based on like zip code searches, et cetera. And it allows you as a mentor to communicate with outside potential mentors in a way that allows you to maybe like if you have a, an interview process or some type of screening process you'd like to do with them prior to then coming to your shop, et cetera. Um, it allows you to kind of be able to do that without having to get into like sharing personal emails and things like that. The other thing that you do know is that um, if you do meet a mentor through the mentor network, those mentors had to go through the YPP screening prior to being eligible to search for a team. So that is yet another thing too, is that you know that they have been YPP screened. Uh, for FRC, the Q&A uh, does open tomorrow. Uh, I believe at noon. And so if you're wanting to start to kind of see the types of questions that people are asking about the game, specific rules, questions, et cetera, uh, check that out. Uh, rules updates. Uh, rule update number one did go out today. There is a way for you to sign up, to subscribe, to receive notification when those uh, hit. I, uh, I signed up and sure enough, I got an email when the update went out. So that's just something uh, to keep in mind. Um, and anytime you coaches uh, that, you know, you're running these teams, there is a lot to running an FRC team. And we're going to hear more from our guests here in a bit about kind of running the build season. Keep in mind that these things, as I go over this stuff, not all of them are like, you should do this. You should do this. You should do this. You should also have some assistant coaches help with this. You should have students who are responsible for checking the Q&A. Uh, I will tell you that to sign up for the email um, notification from first for the FRC updates, you do have to be 18 years old. Um, but anyway, moving on. Uh, our FRC events, we will be week one at Penn High School. Um, that we, that is in Mishawaka, Indiana, March 3rd through the 5th. Now, these dates are inclusive of load in and load out. So when we talk about the 3rd through the 5th, 3rd is uh, doors open at 5 p.m. for load in. So the actual competition will be the 4th and 5th. Uh, week 2 at Princeton High School in Princeton, Indiana, uh, March 10th through the 12th. Jefferson High School in Lafayette, week 4 uh, in Lafayette, Indiana, the 24th through the 26th. Center Grove High School in Greenwood, Indiana, uh, March 30th through April 1st. Uh, these are all Saturday, Sunday events, except for the Center Grove event is a Friday, Saturday. Our state championship, Anderson University in Anderson, Indiana, uh, April 6th through the 8th. That is Easter weekend, but the event is Saturday, uh, Friday and Saturday. And then the first championship, the George R. Brown Convention Center, Houston, Texas, April 19th through the 22nd. Some of you, as we go through this stuff too, may be thinking, um, well, gosh, I don't necessarily need to know when first championship is, do I, Chris? Well, you never know. Okay, so uh, we have a playbook. And I'm going to drop the link to that in the chat. Uh, we have a wiki uh, where you can go. There's a ton of different resources there. Um, and you can also join a regional mentor group within the playbook. 
This is uh, based on um, an open source class portal called Moodle. And so you can join a, a, a forum conversation that is pooled by coaches that are kind of in your part of the state. It could be FTC, FLL coaches as well. Uh, but um, this way you could talk to other coaches, uh, maybe schedule scrimmages. If there's teams in the area that have field elements and you don't, you could share, or if you have a field, uh, et cetera. And then tonight, all right. Uh, I am uh, pleased to have with us some uh, coaches from uh, FRC 5010, Tiger Dynasty from Fishers High School. Um, also uh, pleased to have Kyle Heaton, an FRC alum and uh, Uber volunteer, and also a first senior mentor now. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to plan for the build season uh, from, you know, kickoff where you start, you know, breaking down the game to design, prototyping, building, coding, practicing, et cetera. You know, where should you be by when and what are some really kind of good best practices? Uh, with that, um, I, we do also have, uh, I know I, I see Nathan Coulomb on board this evening. Uh, Nathan's a longtime veteran coach uh, with FRC 1741 Red Alert in Greenwood, Indiana, Center Grove. Um, and uh, we do have uh, Dennis with our rookie team, FRC team 9119, woohoo, Iron Legends, Fort Wayne Northside High School, and uh, David Erickson from uh, New Team uh, 3890, Breaking Away which uh, those of us who are old enough know is a really awesome cycling movie uh, based on the amazing race at Indiana University every year, the little 500. Uh, Academy Award winning film, Breaking Away, by the way. Um, and they are the new FRC team based out of Bloomington South High School. So anyway, uh, thank you for joining us. And um, the I guess I'll just kind of start um, and throw it out to the, the veterans that are here this evening. We got kickoff. We have roughly um, seven or eight weeks leading up to competition. A couple of things first. What do you see as from like an FRC perspective, uh, you know, and this is gonna be across the board, right? I think a lot of teams are gonna differ on this as like a reasonable expectation of how often should FRC teams meet during the build season? Uh, what might be too few? what's probably too much, right? Uh, is there a balance? Um, uh, and kind of start there. But then from there, kind of what, what's that arc of where should be, where do you think teams should be maybe by the end of the first week, second week, third week, et cetera. So anyway, I don't know if anybody wants to jump in right away. Uh, just Curtis um, with 5010 Tiger Dynasty, what is your, uh, the 5010, and any of you could answer this, what is 5010's uh, build season schedule yeah so we are kind of doing sort of a theme week a kind of a schedule if you will um we broke it down just kind of week by week and so like this week right now uh is what we call strategy week or you might just call it like ideas week or brainstorming week um it's where you just want to be percolating ideas up and and, and thinking through what you might want to do um and then you know the rest of the build season it, just kind of follows like uh, the idea is to expose the kids to, you know, the, the product development life cycle, more or less, as it applies to uh, first. And so second week would be prototyping week. And the third week is our CAD or design week. And then the fourth week, we get into fabrication. And the fifth week is build, actually building the robot, getting it all together. And sixth week is programming. Seventh uh, is where you want to be doing your driver practicing and kind of eighth through, you know, plus is competition weeks, essentially competition support. And, you know, those those weeks aren't necessarily like hard cutoffs. Uh, the idea is that each of those weeks, that is kind of what you want your emphasis to be on and uh, kind of being like ramping up into each week and ramping out of each week a little bit uh, from, from, as a emphasis to kind of way of look, looking at it. Okay, good. Um, to kind of add on to that as well, uh, you know, we, we, you know, kind of like he was mentioning where it was the, it's not a mutually exclusive, like you're only doing one thing this week. So for example, this week, uh, even though it is kind of our, it is our strategy week, we still have groups who are already making prototypes. They're already working on, you know, initial plans for 
uh, you know, maybe going into more full scale prototyping and development next for next week. But we're now just like trying to get the ideas into a physical medium for people to see what their ideas are. Great. Yeah. So, so what I hear is while you've got the themes, it's not like other things aren't also going on. So there's, there's probably also some coding and, and things like that. Where does, where does research play into this? I mean, how much time does your team spend researching previous games or in case of this year, uh, are any of you spending a little bit of time researching FTC games? Yeah. So, um, uh, uh, kickoff was primary that entire Saturday was like, was researching, you know, the, you know, kind of coming off the initial part of, okay, how do we feel about this game? Some things that come up, but then, um, other people who've been, uh, other people, whether they're alumni or been doing or mentoring for a while, the first thing they think of, start to think of is like, what other games are these similar to? Um, and so for this year's game, we got kind of a combination of elements from like a pick and place game, like a 2011, 2000, uh, 2007, that sort of thing, as well as uh, um, as well as some other uh, elements like the bridge balance from kind of 12, 2012 time frame. So kind of the first day for us is spending most of it going through rules and going through the game elements and how you score points. Because, you know, well, you know, while it's cool to start thinking about what you want your robot to look like, you got to kind of start from a point of how do I score points? How do I get raking points? You know, what, you know, before we start even getting into, well, this design could be too complicated. Or this design could be not great. You know, once you, you kind of have to set those constraints early on on what you want to actually do. So like a lot of our first you know, but this first couple days are aren't even looking at robot rules necessarily. They're only looking at the sections of the rule book as it pertains to the game and the actual mechanics of it. Okay. Um, and I know that there's I, I put a link um the first time not successfully, second time successfully, the link to the Blue Alliance uh for newer teams. Uh good place to go back and look at old uh, old games because you can search by year. You can also go watch match play from uh, previous seasons. Uh, now, newer teams, newer coaches might not necessarily know because they don't have the history to say, oh yeah, I remember 2010 was a whatever game, right? Or um, be able to do that. But you can, st but I suppose even just going to Google or YouTube, probably starting to do some searches, uh, students can start to, to get an idea of, um, of that right uh so week so it sounds like we had those kind of weeks build out um of the schedule like what's your when we talk about your schedule what's your weekly schedule look like how how many nights a week are you meeting um at 5010 yeah so <clears throat> on mondays we meet uh from four to seven tuesdays three to six wednesdays four to seven fridays three to six and then saturdays are 10 to two. Um, so we meet about five days a week for three to four hours. Um, and then that's kind of our starting time. Cause as we get later into the season and realize we're falling behind, which happens year to year, you know, uh, those start, you know, extending out and start, uh, kind of overflowing into a couple hours later. You know, I remember last year, there's a couple nights where we're in the shop from 4 PM till 10 PM or 10 till six on Saturday. Um, it's not a unheard of try not to do it, but you know, when the robot got, has to get done, it's got to get done. <laughs> sure. Sure. Uh, and then, um, the, uh, once the competition season really kind of gets underway, once you hit week one, do you let up on that schedule a little bit? Do you go to a modified schedule or do you kind of continue with a similar schedule through your competition season? Usually we keep the same schedule through competition season. Um, we've also had, at least this past year, especially, we've had some uh, serious uh, collapses in some of our mechanisms where it's, you know, no different from the build season where it's like, all right, we have to rebuild an entire mechanism again. Um, but yeah, I would expect, especially just to get more driver practice, because we found that just from the start to the end of one competition, you know, the uh, four or five hours of drive time that our 
our driver got, you know, made drastic. It was a night and day difference between performance on the field. So prior to the first, sorry. I was going to say, we were usually taking uh, like a day off right after competition. That's probably the one day of break that we're like, okay, let's decompress and, and, you know, process things. But yeah, otherwise it's like, Oh, you go to a competition weekend, for example, but then maybe that Monday you have off. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and we certainly we, encourage we do our that students. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We encourage our students to just sort of like come in when their schedule allows to. And, and uh, you know, it, it's not necessarily everybody every single day. Oh, so what you're saying, because you have sub teams is that certain students might not come on a Monday. Maybe a certain sub team might take Monday nights off or um, et cetera. And I know some of our larger more, uh, veteran teams are going to have quite a few sub teams that might be just doing award submissions or um, uh, marketing, P, you know, whatever the different units. And then, so they may kind of ebb and flow like certain nights of the week, not be there. Uh, do you also do that with your mentors? Do your mentors kind of pick a night of the week off? I know, I know for I'm me, like off. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I know for me personally, um, I definitely, uh, I, you know, kind of go into it each year, just kind of like, you know, kind of gauging on, it, you know, all right, what happened last year? Was that fine? Was that too much? Was that not enough? And kind of finding a way between it, you know, we have a, we at least have uh, we have a decent amount of mentors who are um, who are local who you know we we can come in you know I, I I go in I go in and instead of like five days a week it's more like three to four you know but then there's like but then I know that like there's you know the rest of the team is there and they're they're still getting their their items done you know and um, just kind of trying to find that balance between you know, being there all the time and also like, but then also, uh, you know, if you have personal matters or, you know, you know, finding that balance to make sure you don't, you know, kind of burn yourself out by week two um, and, you know, kind of going for a, going for the marathon and not the sprint on it. Sure. So one thing we're going to try to encourage our rookies to do this year, and, and we have one of our rookie team coaches here this evening, um, and certainly we wouldn't, um, it's not that we are discouraging anyone else from doing this. Anybody could do this, right? It's, but for our two rookies this year, is, uh, we're going to highly encourage them to build every bot. So we're going to kind of wait. You know, that's a waiting period uh, because we're waiting for every bot to come out. Um, but then um, it, thinking about that standpoint, like building every bot, how would that, like, as you would go into it, could you probably be, maybe provide some guidance or ideas because I think that changes your time frame, right? Since you're not really going to be do as much time prototyping, designing, things like that, and more focus on just kind of building. Um, would that change maybe how you would look at things or, or also thinking about that, would you encourage the rookie teams to kind of take the everybody idea and maybe try to add something to it or um, you know, modify it in some way, shape or form? Yeah. So the, um, uh, um, so part of what we can do, you know, kind of during this time frame is, you know, if it's possible, if they, you know, if it is a rookie team, if they have, or if they already have, um, maybe if they already have a drive base possibly beforehand, or maybe it was donated from another team, you know, that sort of thing. Um, then finding ways to get your, uh, finding ways to get drivers stick time is, is always something I've always been a big proponent of getting them comfortable behind a robot and how it reacts to their inputs, whether it's, you know, whether, you know, if maybe they, maybe there's some nuances to the controllers or something like that, that, you know, they, you won't really know until you, you started driving it. Um, and uh, that's, you know, any, or, you know, if you have an advantage of being around uh, other, other veteran teams, maybe go with them and see how their, what their process is during this time frame. maybe, or, um, you know, you know, working with them and seeing, you know, what other things they're thinking of as well, you know, kind of trying to use this time frame for, you know, the kind of constructiveness of the kind of the team as a whole, um, you know, not just for, you know, even if you are kind of in a kind of a semi-waiting period for that, 
you know, finding ways to um, benefit the team as far as uh, maybe, yeah, maybe you start doing the, you know, maybe you start kind of doing maybe not as much prototyping, but just maybe some of it just kind of see, you know, percolate the ideas kind of like kind of getting all of everything out there and into the ether. So then we can start, you start thinking about those things and you start thinking about um, these kind of fringe strategies that maybe aren't talked about at, you know, at a different level, just because of, you know, they have different goals in mind. Okay. So get some driver yeah. practice. Yeah. Most our rookie teams do a um, rookie quick field where we get them the Andy Mark uh, chassis, the AM 14, U, whatever the year is, right. Uh, AM 14, U 15 or 14, whatever the model number is, we get them the chassis. We do a, uh, a, a um, an RC control system, not a robo Rio system with that, but to your point, even that's okay. Get a driver, get some multiple kids. It sounds like time on a carpet with a robot, get a feel for it. Um, probably also an idea, a, a, an ideal time to start to find out who'd be interested in that. Um, and uh, this might also be a good time for a rookie team to maybe start to develop a culture around diving deeper into the rules and understanding uh, the rules and how the rules I mean, year to year, there are certain things that don't necessarily change from kind of a standard operating procedure at our events, uh, but then there's game rules, right? And so maybe spend some time as a team to start to understand like event rules. How does the district model work? Um, you know, where are the points in the district model, et cetera, um, uh, and, and go from there. As you're wait, as you know, as you're waiting for the every bot release, I did just tech check. It, it the every bot I, i'll drop the uh, link here it's not ready yet but it should be ready pretty soon um i know that some teams will swap out they'll take the every bot design and then they'll give the team a budget of say like a thousand dollars and swap out some of the motors for higher performance motors and the drive chassis to you know make it a little bit faster um uh, but anyway so we'll see um and fortunately, our two rookie teams do have really good partners in the areas, veteran teams that are kind of helping support them through the rookie year, uh, which is also good. Uh, and Fort Wayne Northside is, uh, you know, also has Kyle helping out every now and then. Um, but uh, yeah, A anything else from any of the other? Uh, I mean, you know, Nathan, if you, if you want to chime in a little bit about uh, Red Alerts process, that you know, six to eight week ish process. Um, you know, if it's as focused per week by a theme or less focused or? I would say it depends on the year and the progress that we make and the experience level of the students, right? Uh, don't be married to a very specific schedule. Work with what fits for your team in that particular year. Um, now, our, in terms of our like weekly, what do we, what, what, when do we meet? Uh, we do Monday through Friday, uh, 6.30 to 9 p.m. and then Saturdays 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We do provide lunch on the Saturdays. Um, but I mean, it's it's very similar to kind of what others have talked about of, you know, you, you focus on strategy at the beginning. Of what do we want to accomplish? What do we think we can accomplish? What's gonna get us um, ranked the highest? What's gonna allow us to advance in the tournament or in the season? You know, sometimes without a lot of experience in a particular like gameplay or uh, scoring challenge, that's difficult. But you know, you can make guesses. You can go back and reference you know similar games, um, and then uh, definitely prototype simple mechanisms. Whether that's full size, you know, take some two by fours, put a big bolt through it, and so you have something that actuates or build Lego models um, or connects models. We've, we do all types of prototyping like that, even paper models of things. Um, it allows the kids to get hands-on and it helps you kind of play out some concepts. Some people are very um, visual and conceptual thinkers. And so they can do that kind of in their head or in CAD. Others need physical models. Do what works for your team and your students. Um, and then, yeah, start building things uh, with parts that you have, get stuff on order. 
this year, especially ordering things is you got to order them early, which is unfortunate because you have to design them first. Um, so we're fortunate enough to have the resources to be able to buy some motors, controllers and things like that ahead of time if they're available. Um, but I know not every team can do that. Um, stock material, right? If you just go to your hardware store, maybe talk to one of the local metal suppliers in your area. Um, you know, a lot of times they'll be willing to donate a few um, stock pieces that they have, um, build those relationships so that you can have sponsorships in the future with those kind of companies. Um, and then, yeah, test, 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 test. Build it, test it, break it, build it again, redesign, keep going. And that process goes on through competitions. Great. Well, yeah, I think you hit on a couple of key points that are really uh, good to think about is that, um, you know, you have to think about all the resources that you have at your disposal, whether it's the, the youth that you have, uh, the mentor base that you have, what kind of expertise do you have from a mentor base? Uh, and then also money, resources, tools, fabrication, equipment, et cetera. So um, you have to kind of play out what resources do we have? And then, then from there, start to decide, okay, well, what can we, what can we build and accomplish in this time frame? Uh, and then maybe we can accomplish whatever we we'd like to plan out. We've got the resources to build robots with elevators and arms and, and, and fancy, you know, custom drivetrains, or we should go with, uh, which by the way, going with a, a standard, the drive chassis that comes in the kit of parts is a good solution. It's a good chassis and it works really well and it's solid and it's robust. And, you know, that might be the, you know, but then you go with that because especially for our rookie teams, they've built it once in the quick build. So they've got experience, build that and then spend your, spend your energy on designing what's going to go on top of that, right? Uh, on that chassis. That, and that's one of the reasons why we want to try to encourage every bot for the first year uh, because it provides our rookie teams and especially the students an opportunity to also start to learn their shop and their equipment. Because uh, the nice thing is too with that is that it's not a kit. I mean, it's not like you're just going to get a kit that you're going to um, bolt together. You're still going to have to fabricate. You're still going to have to cut and learn how to use all the equipment in your shop, measure. Uh, uh, and then, but then at least you can hopefully have a, a robust machine that uh, can um, minimally compete, but then put it in the hands of your drivers. And if you get a drive team that can practice enough, you can turn a minimally competitive robot into a really nice second pick in the, in the playoffs. Okay. So I would, I would also say don't uh, neglect programming and uh, learning the API uh, because, you know, it's, it's something that you have to learn the specifics of how things work in first hmm. um, that API is, is evolving constantly. And uh, so what you learn one year might not even be the, quite the same the next year. Um and uh, it, it takes a little bit to dig into it. There, it, it goes very in depth. You can do a lot with, with what's really simple, um, especially within every bot. So, but uh, just taking your time with that and making sure you understand it, it's really important. Yeah, so installing it, the WPI library on those computers is a process in and of itself, right? That's true. I, I will also say, cause I was talking to, I know one student earlier today about this exact topic of kind of programming. I mean, this year, really does lend itself to like one programming problem that teams can really focus on, you know, at, throughout the whole season being balancing on the charging station. I mean, you give the students, you know, a, a simple chassis and then give them a gyro as, you know, a, any form of gyro, they can start spending their time, you know, fidgeting with that and saying, okay, like, how do I automate balancing on this switch? I mean, that's been a, that's been a problem that teams have worked on pretty much every year that there has ever been a balancing aspect in the game. So that's definitely a fun one for teams to do this year, all season long, so that the programmers aren't hurrying up and waiting for weeks four, five, and six. I'm going to post in, in the chat uh, a link I found to uh, the Navex uh, uh, gyro uh, manufacturer, the product. They have some auto balance example code that I just found that I like pulled our programs to go look at. So great if that uh, if that helps anybody. 
Yeah. And then I'll make sure when I post this uh, on YouTube and send it out, I can put all of these links in the description of the video. And then all those links will be available also uh, for people who go back and watch this later. Yeah, that'd be really helpful. Um, another thing I wanted to throw out that I forgot, completely forgot, and I'm impressed hasn't been brought up yet. Uh, things that could be done early in is early on is robot in three days of watching oh. others do robot in three days. Uh, the, um, you know, the, it's, you know, these, these groups that are doing the robot in three days, um, for those who don't know, is there are groups out there, you know, generally alumni, mentors uh, from other teams who come together and do a really fast accelerated build season to a, uh, and build a robot, you know, as it says, within three days and to play this year's game. And then they add a, a lot of the aspects as far as the, you know, they do rapid prototyping, they're doing, um, they're doing various, you know, the bigger mechanisms and, um, you know, that sort of thing uh, and getting, you know, getting other teams and then they're being very open about, you know, every, every aspect of it, as far as the, um, as far as what's going wrong, what's going right, what's going wrong. Oh, this did really well. Oh, this, you know, we immediately broke it, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and gets a sense on, you know, maybe, you know, maybe you didn't think of this, maybe this is something you already thought of and you, you know, maybe you want to do it, but then now that you see it, you're like, hmm, maybe that's not our speed, you know, that sort of thing. And just, you know, it's kind of seeing that process out there because, you know, there's there's a handful of these groups. There's usually, you know, I'd say about five to six each year that, that do this. And whenever they do, it's, you know, they are posting it on YouTube, they're posting it on Chief Delphi. They're, you know, being very open about kind of every, every part of it and their, uh, analysis of the game and what they think their robot can do with it, you know, and uh, that, that, that always is a great way to, yeah, it's going down the path of what you, you know, of finding out what you want to do or what you don't want to do. Great. Thanks. Well, I know these calls are, are one topic and they're, they're pretty short, about 30 minutes. Um, we do have a couple other coaches on the call this evening. I didn't know maybe if there were a few questions um, that either our newer coaches or rookie coaches wanted to ask uh, of some of the veterans that are here tonight. I have a question. Somebody mentioned about carpet because um, all we have is cement floor. Uh, does the carpet really make that big of a difference when it comes to driving then? Especially, I imagine it would with the uh, autonomous mode. I, I would definitely say autonomous, especially carpet, super helpful. Um, in terms of driver practice, I mean, they can, I feel like they can get a general feel for the robot of how it wants to behave. Um, and then just on carpet, they can kind of expect it to be a bit more um, tactile and responsive because it won't slip as much. Is it like an outdoor carpet then carpet that they use? Yeah, it's a it's a real tight Berber. Um, I, in the, um, I'm pretty sure in the rule book, right. They actually have the entire detail in the oh, rule book of exactly like, if you wanted to go buy it, um, even if you wanted to buy like a small section of it, um, a full size field roll is probably not that cheap, but, um, Nathan could tell you, I think red alert just got some new carpet. Uh, we did, it, you are correct. It's not cheap. Um, but again, finding sponsors who are, are willing to, um, you know, pay for things like that is, is really helpful. Um, it, I'll just plug, we, we will have a week zero scrimmage um, in our shop on February 19th, I think it's a Sunday. Um, so for any teams in Indiana, well, I mean, even if you want to come from out of state <laughs> um, that want to participate in that, you know, we'll have um, carpet that is at least, if not the color, the um, style that there will be the competition carpet. Um, and field elements, I mean, they'll be mostly wooden, but we do try to add a few Lexan or polycarbonate, uh, or excuse me, um, HDPE uh, surfaces where we think that they're going to be important in terms of gameplay or field interaction. Um, and it'll be a full-size fields, 
um, open to just any team that wants to come. Um, we'll send you links to send out Chris, if you would. Great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. And then I suppose along the way too, um, for rookie teams or newer teams that maybe are going to, especially if you're going to go for every bot and we're waiting for that to roll out, I would also probably stress another thing that you could be doing right now. And it's not as exciting as building a robot, right? But it might also be like going over the awards and understanding what are the definition of the, of the awards and what, uh, because on the, on the, all the website that, you know, it lays out what the awards are, what the definitions are. And then how as a team can you begin to, you know, work toward or, or how do we put ourselves in a position to potentially, you know, say, oh, well, as a rookie team, we feel like we could try to win one or two of these or we, you know, and, and how do we, you know, what is it that the judges are looking for in terms of rookie inspiration and rookie all-star? Because keep in mind that um, at an event where you have um only a couple of teams judges can opt to not award the rookie all-star award um and so um how do you position yourself to be that rookie team that's that the judges say oh we are going to award it because this team has has definitely met the criteria and earned it right so definitely kind of working on things like that shop safety maybe this is also a good time to uh, go over that maybe this is also a good time to just start teaching the students how to cut with a bandsaw and drill with, you know, practice drilling holes and into a couple of different surfaces, right? Here's a metal bit, a wood bit, you know, plastic, you know, how do you cut into these things? Uh, because then as soon as those directions come out, you're going to have to be cutting and drilling into wood and plastic and, you know, and uh, aluminum, et cetera. So uh, th I think there's a lot of team can be doing right now uh, if they're waiting for the every bot. Um, but yeah, I want to thank all of you for for being here this evening and talking about um, kind of how you all uh, navigate your build season, whether it's a kind of week by week process. Again, um, 5010 Fishers, um, Tiger Dynasty, thank you for being here this evening to um, talk a little bit about kind of how you all approach the season. Nathan Coulomb with FRC 1741 Red Alert, thanks for kind of also talking to us about uh, Red Alert's um, philosophy around kind of the you got to take what you get this year but also kind of manage your resources and um and look at the game um any final thoughts or or um pieces of wisdom rj's like yeah caleb's like yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah we got a huge um, list yeah the two main things i'd like to put up is uh the xrc simulator which is essentially it's a video game version of this year's game and uh, as we saw this year, it released the same time that you get the uh, you get the manual. And during kickoff, we set up a server, we played it, um, and that gave us a lot of insight on how we thought the game was going to play. We saw areas where, like, yeah, it's going to get really congested here, so we're going to have to, you know, really communicate with our teammates on how we're going to navigate that. Um, we saw areas where, like, yeah, defense being played here is going to be really effective, um, and kind of getting that strategy of how how is your team going to set themselves up for success, right? Uh, very few teams, I think, can go out and do everything amazing. Um, so instead of trying to be the the does everything perfectly, uh, picking that niche, like, you know, we're not going to do all the placements. We're going to maybe just, we're going to play slow. We're going to play really good defense. I mean, last year we saw a couple teams that didn't even touch the game pieces. They strictly, they had a drive base and they played amazing defense and they were sought after by every team out there because everyone knew yeah if you got them on your team they were going to defend the other top scorer and they would be you know they'd neutralize them for you so those are those are effective strategies you know you don't have to be the one putting up the biggest points sometimes it's you know hitting those hard jobs that other people are trying to get get around that uh make you an important role out there yeah if you could place if you could do something quickly right because time is points in first and it doesn't matter if it's fll ftc or frc time is points it's cycling and if you could go in as a as a new team as a rookie team and say look we can place all these low ones and we can do x number in this time and we can get on to the balance plate on the right side or whatever and park there in time for the rest of you to get on every time we can do it and if you can prove that right you're a valuable asset into the playoffs yeah yep. i mean 
Uh, and then also, we're also, we also know the rules and we're not going to commit fouls. <laughs> yes. Uh, fouls have usually been a big deal. Even this year, though, they're even significant. We're looking at some pretty big point values on fouls. So uh, making sure you read up on those rules to avoid some of the pitfalls of those will make you a really valuable team. Okay. And RJ, I think you had something. I was just going to piggyback off him because he already, he already, he had, I had forgotten. So yeah, the XRC sim really helped us out. Uh, yeah. We just had a server going and we, you know, kick off day as soon as it, as soon as we got the, uh, the new server files and everything, we ran it. And yeah. We just had that. We dedicated an entire hour in our like entire hour or so in our kickoff schedule to, all right, join the server, play it, just see what you think. Even if they, even if the, the robot that they give you um, isn't super effective in like actual FRC in the game, within the elements of the, the funsies of the game, it gets the point across as far as the, the spacing, you know, that you're going to see uh, at the edges of the field. Sure. Uh, have you ever, any of you ever done the human player uh, kind of get a, kids out on a basketball court kind of, and, and have like them actually, and give them something that's, might be like a game piece and maybe have them just walk the game and, or even do, I know I've heard some people talk about like they have drivers and the people out on the field can't move until whatever the drivers say. And that's just kind of a fun game to play too, but um, also starts to give them an idea of, Oh, wow. Okay. So there isn't a lot of room out here and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm this big around, but my robot is this big around. <laughs> so I don't know if you all have ever done anything like that or. We tried to do that one year. It was just really hard to coordinate. And I, I'm really glad they came out with the XRC simulator as an alternative. Okay. That, that was hard. Well, good. Well, um, 